Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you, our dear viewer. Thank you so much for choosing the National Broadcaster. Well, it's been a great, a great episode when it comes to Big Sam and the great inspiration that has been coming your way uh, during the gospel hype moment. My name is Sandra Kahunde here to bring you uh, the special edition of our weekly news roundup, some of the activities you could have missed out during the entire week. And uh, we're coming to you live. Today is the seventh day of January 2024. Now, starting off with activities regarding the head of state. President Museveni earlier this week met and held discussions with a group of parliamentary speakers from several countries at a Monyonyo Commonwealth Resort, Kampala. The speakers are part of the ongoing 27th conference of speakers and presiding officers of the Commonwealth being held in Kampala from 3rd 6th to 6th January 2024. The president engaged speakers from Sri Lanka, Ghana, Burundi, and uh, South Sudan, and South uh, Sudan in a success of meetings which were held on the sidelines of the speakers' uh, conference. In a meeting with the Speaker of Parliament of Sri Lanka, Right Honorable Mahinda Yampa, President Museveni said Uganda is ready for investment and cooperation with Sri Lanka. He said the East African country has everything that is required for investment, including a ready market for finished goods. Right Honorable Mahinda commended President Museveni for being a good and exemplary leader. He also informed the President that Sri Lanka is doing well economically, despite uh, being hit by the COVID-19 effects. In another meeting with the Speaker of Ghana's Parliament, Right Honorable Alban S.K. Bagbin and his delegation President Museveni urged the leaders to shun politics of identity and embrace politics of interest to enable the people they lead, to enable the people that they do lead. Right Honorable Bagbin thanked President Museveni for his good leadership skills that have enabled him to become an outstanding and admirable leader in the region. In another meeting, President Museveni and the South Sudan National Assembly Speaker Right Honorable Jema Nunu Nkumba discussed the social political dynamics of South Sudan, including the issue of elections. The President also had a brief engagement with the Speaker of Burundi National Assembly, Right Honorable Daniel Ndabirambe. The President earlier hosted delegates to a luncheon where he stressed that the huge population of Africa has for a long time been mismanaged by what he termed as false ideology of imperialists who fronted politics of identity rather than interests. In other updates, a section of the visiting speakers of the Commonwealth this week uh, toward Quality Chemical Industries Limited in Luzira. Uh, led by the Deputy Speaker of Parliament, Thomas Tayewa. The familiarization tour is an advantage to expose Uganda's own products to the international world. Uh, Tayewa says the move boosts intra-Africa trade relations and paves way for economic diversification. On Friday afternoon, a section of visiting speakers and presiding officers who are in Uganda to attend the 27th conference of the speakers and presiding officers of the Commonwealth visited Sipla Quality Chemical Industries Limited in Ruzira. <laughs> Thomas Taewa, the Deputy Speaker of Parliament, led the delegates who were taken round the manufacturing plant at Sipla by Emmanuel Katongole, the Executive Chairman of Sipla. <laughs> On top of manufacturing antiretroviral medicines to treat HIV AIDS, medicines to treat hepatitis and malaria, Quality Chemical Industries Limited has added manufacturing medicine to treat diabetes on the menu. We currently registered in 34 African countries and we 
actively trade and export to 15 African countries. We believe that the visit of the speakers will increase our export uh, potential and uh, ability to take the medicines to other countries. The delegates had a chance to witness the manufacturing plants aiding in the production of the medicines in Uganda. The deputy speaker, Thomas Taiwa reveals that visiting Sipla exposes Uganda's products and potential to the outside market. Taiwa adds that intra-Africa trade relations are a great avenue of economic diversification and Sipla adds to the value chain in Uganda. Like now, here, this plant supplies up South Africa. It supplies Namibia, it supplies Zambia, it supplies West Africa. So, but some speakers have found that they are getting these medicines, essential medicines, from the rest of the world apart from Africa. So from here, what we are urging them to do is to go to their governments and ensure that indeed all medicines produced from here shouldn't be procured from Asia, from Europe, from Africa. Taewa says quality chemicals is a national pride which needs support and make the African continent proud. And I hope we can continue supporting such investors so that once they grow, the whole continent is proud. These are the guys who saved South Africa and other countries during COVID, when Asia couldn't export to Africa, when Europe couldn't export to Africa, when America couldn't export to Africa. These guys stepped in and saved Africa. So I had to showcase to my fellow speakers. The team also planted some trees at the premises of CIPLA to boost the conservation initiative of the environment. <laughs> the speakers and presiding officers of the Commonwealth later visited Parliament of Uganda where they were taken on a tour by both the Speaker of Uganda's Parliament and Anita Among and her deputy Thomas Tayebwa. Speaker Among shared with the guests the composition of Uganda's parliament and its efforts to legislate with that most consideration of the people of Uganda. So that's what we basically do. We have a very good working relationship mm -hmm. and we just pray to God that we continue the same spirit and that is what will make the institution. The 27th conference of speakers and presiding officers of the Commonwealth ends this Saturday, 6th January 2024. Daniel Mugoya, Juman Samba, UBS News. Relatedly on the same conversation, the Speaker of Parliament, Annette Anita Among, has described the conference of speakers and presiding officers of the Commonwealth as successful. We'll take home messages not limited to avenues of mitigating challenges, but changing respective countries and enhancing legislation accordingly. Speaker Among says, 50 countries were represented out of the 72 and have deliberated on how to build consensus in respective parliaments. This was a special dinner at Ndere Cultural Center where the CS spoke 2024 host country, Uganda, accommodated the delegates representing the respective parliaments under the Commonwealth on the night of Friday, 5th June, 2024. <laughs> The night unfolded with a breathtaking display of Uganda's diverse cultural expressions. The renowned Dere troupe captivated the audience with its mesmerizing Chiganda dance, a spectacle of strength and grace that showcased the vibrant artistic traditions of the Waganda people. <laughs> But the cultural embroidery extended far beyond dance as the guests were treated to a feast for the senses, experiencing the rhythmic storytelling of traditional music, Ugandan attire, and the lovely flavors of the Pearl of Africa's food. You should leave all the important places and come to be with us. Thank you, thank you ever so much. What a beautiful way to begin our 40th year. Is 40 years this year. We thank you for your love. The presiding officers of Uganda's parliament held several engagements with the respective speakers and presiding officers to familiarize the respective legislation processes. We can actually create 
an MOU, a collaboration MOU between our parliament and your parliament, such that we should they should be coming for benchmarking in your parliament, and you're also able to send your members of parliament for benchmarking for us to be able to get more what we can do from your country and what you can do from our country. 50 speakers and presiding officers of the Commonwealth managed to attend the 27th CSPOC held in Uganda. Speaker Nita Mong reveals that the conference successfully managed to realize the avenues of mitigating climate change, enhance the treat of members of parliament and parliament at large, and also build consensus, especially in a multi-party parliament. This debate, this conference, is on issues of how parliaments should be able to work independently and support government in running the nation. Mm. For instance, if we are talking about climate issues, we should be able to enact laws that help us in mitigating the climate issues. It's basically that. Issues of security, we should be involved in whatever happens in a country that parliament should be involved in whatever decision that is taken, especially on issues that concern humanity. Speaker Anita Among tasked the delegates to consider forming regional caucuses, citing example of the East African community, where the collaboration has harmonized legislation of the respective countries. I've always told my members of parliament, if you want to do benchmarking, say on the roads, on anything, you cannot go to New York. You can only go to a country which is like yours. Yes. Daniel Mugoya, Gloria Gutabinji, UBC News. Now away from Parliament, National Information Technology Authority, Uganda, Nita U has successfully installed the latest infrastructure to ease communication during the upcoming non-aligned movement and G77 plus China summits. The executive director, Nita Uganda, Dr. Hatui Mugasa, says the process to install Wi-Fi 6 has taken about a month with capacity to last 7 to 10 years. He revealed this during the ministerial tour by Dr. Chris Bariomonzi of the level of Uganda's preparedness for NAM Summit in terms of information and communications technology. All global eyes remain glued on Uganda as preparations for NAM aligned movement and G77 plus China summits remain on course. The latest breakthrough is by National Information Technology Authority Uganda, NITAU. The successful installation of the latest apparatus at Entebbe International Airport has attracted nothing less than gratitude from all stakeholders. We manage the borders, both the physical and also the virtual. Today, before people uh, start their journeys, there is need to know who they are. We don't have to do the control when they reach here, but actually if it's possible, we'd rather keep the bad guys the other side. Without uh, collaboration with the airport, none of this would have been possible. Uh, I would also give special thanks for NITAU. We have worked within one month. You, you build the virtual network, we build the physical network. And today I've seen how we can actually integrate these two networks to allow connection of our people. The latest technology being referred to here is Wi-Fi 6, which is confirmed to be faster than all the previous versions. Dr. Hatwib Mugasa is the executive director, NITA Uganda. We are focused on guaranteeing a secure and efficient communication network infrastructure, process automation, robust cybersecurity measures, seamless communication channels, and efficient data management. This holistic approach is paramount in facilitating the success and security of this significant event or events. To acquaint himself with what is being talked about, 
Here is Dr. Chris Barrio Munsi, Uganda's Minister for Information, Communication Technology and National Guidance. He has been guided through all terminals of the airport, including ordinary VIP and VVIP sections. After the successful trek and braving the rain, the minister is impressed. Our intention has been to provide a high speed and efficient Wi-Fi or internet here at the airport, better than what we find in many of the airports outside. And I can confidently say I am one of those who travel frequently that the service here is now much better than what we see in many airports. It took one month to have this technology successfully installed to simplify communication during the NAM summit. But what happens after the summits? Does this end with NAM? Yes, we have fixed these services, but they're not going to go away with the, with the summits or the delegates. The services shall remain here. Uh, people have been having those comments. Why are you fixing the roads? the network when the visitors are coming. But we also know traditionally when you have to receive visitors, you sweep the compound. <laughs> mind this, uh, put in mind that this is uh, infrastructure that's going to last for more than, uh, for about seven to ten years. So it's not a one-off. It is infrastructure that's going to be permanent and utilized by the government of Uganda. So that's, that cost is going to be spread over a couple of years. Minister Barrio Munsi also says Resources have been secured to extend similar services across the country. We have been laying what we call the national backbone infrastructure, the optical fiber. We've covered now maybe roughly 50 to 60 percent of the country with the fiber. But now we've acquired resources which will enable us to extend to the rest of the country. As the tour ended, part of which was at the Entebbe Express Highway, it was obvious that Uganda was ready for the two summits in terms of information and communication technology. Henry Okrut, UBC. <laughs>Kampala Entebbe Expressway is a four-lane toll highway in the central region of Uganda that links Entebbe International Airport, the country's largest airport, to Kampala. The multi-billion project, whose construction commenced on 21st November 2012, has been in phases and was opened to public use on 15th June 2018. Whereas the public commended government and Ministry of Works and Transport for the good services on the Kampala Entebbe Expressway, one of the biggest concerns was the darkness on the 21-kilometer stretch, especially at night. With a remarkable 96% of the Kampala Entebbe Expressway now brilliantly illuminated, Uganda National Roads Authority is extending its efforts to light up the Northern Bypass and Kampala flyover. The spokesperson of UNRWA, Alan Sempewa, highlights the ongoing initiatives to enhance and maintain roads, emphasizing the commitment to building a safer and more efficient transportation infrastructure for Uganda. Yes, we are going to light the Kampala Northern Bypass. 
yeah, from the start up to the end at Namboli. In fact, the exercise has commenced. They are doing excavations along the road. So the road is going to be lit. We hope that it will improve uh, the, the safety of the road. Because one of the reasons our, uh, our Ugandans are raising is the road is not safe. Uh, there are security threats because there are no lights. So we're going to put the lights and uh, curb uh, these cases of uh, theft and insecurity on our, on our highways. We're also going to light the Munyonyo Kajansi Spa. And I think you know that's also the main route for the NAM summit. Uh, excavations are also underway already. We hope that by 10th of this month, we'll have a number of sections along that road lead. He assured the public that the authority master plan is to improve and maintain roads across the country, creating a safer and more efficient transportation infrastructure for Uganda. So right from Mpala, Airport Road, Mpala, Kajansi to Munyonyo, we are currently undertaking beautification activities from the airport road all through to Mpala. We are replacing the damaged guardrails uh, from Kajansi to, to Munyonyo. We are lighting that section. Alan Sempewa highlights the challenges and some of the successes of using the toll road. So these are not government of Uganda's roads. These are roads done by government of Uganda for the people of Uganda. So let's own them protect them, guard them jealously. If you see anybody taking a unit or asset off our highway or expressway, report. If you've seen it anywhere, in any space or location, let us know and let's build and conserve these roads together. Brian Tumwinebiaruhanga, UBC News. The Prime Minister, Robin Anabanje, has assured a residents of Chiriandongo district that government is committed to address land-related challenges in the area. Uh, this follows issues raised by Chiriandongo district leaders during the Mbogo clan regional annual general meeting held at Kitwara village, Chiriandongo sub-county, Chiriandongo district. Helen Kahonde, the Chiriandongo district woman member of parliament, and Aliguma Edith Adieri, the LC5 chairperson Chiriandongo district told the premier that residents have one pressing need of land scarcity. The leaders say that the government promised them land in Ranch 11, but to their disappointment, the same land was allegedly allocated to one investor by Uganda Land Commission. We are having two things to say. One, land problem. The government gave us land. We are given land as land to Yandongo Ranch, covering the two sub-counties, Mutunda and Yandongo. But we are never allowed to get the land titles. The land grabbers are always coming to grab our land without the right title. So I kindly ask you, so the government can give us permission to get the land titles. Yandongo and Kana. Being in Quata Gain in a Hamata, Venin Savanti, Hanyu Maburatunga Kaye, a Morphis Yahweh, or Tunga Yakiro, or Vejaki Yandongo, or Boykaran, a Vekul and Bezvaki Yandongo, or Quete Gereza in details, and Songa is Quasia, Hamataka, Moki Yandongo, Chairperson of his ranch, people, the Kuguruka Haranch in his Genda and Hand, the cutting across constituencies. The leaders also requested for the upgrade of Chiriandongo General Hospital to a referral status to attend to accident emergencies on the Kampala Gulu Highway. <laughs> Upgrading 
Responding to issues raised by the leaders, the Prime Minister promised to meet all concerned parties so that the land issue is resolved. Okwenda to upgrade Ngekili Andongo Hospital to giteke her regional, highway regional hospital. Kinu nkituwa hile, obutu hatu ikali yom cabinet, ya kianjula yu. Aro ranches, ezitu ngilevizivu, na ye, munu munu ranch number two, number 11, number 11, egiba haile investor, no haya jimu haile. Uganda Land Commission, njia kubeta, nkabebe meziba akiri andongu, kale tu njia kubeta umofisi kampara, tulule ngu ni anyu wene mutunga kuhurua. Nabanja appealed to Mbago clan members to be focused and work to improve their household incomes and livelihoods. She says that the Mbago clan should be a model clan that can sustain itself and embrace government programs. Every Mufuma Mbago should be able to feed his or her family. Buli Mufuma Mbago aina kuba na asobora kulise family ye. Tutaswara. Na mbuwa na akahoko mzikati. Na wakati uke ni kakuhura, ruwanga wangi. Na uwa na kamuwa isi. Mbuchu. Arafu mamoko nyue na mgeende, mutandike koro. Hapu wakuma government ya tuwa ile a conducive environment to do our work. Sechui teteri yu. Obuwa kutuunda, ebichi olibia waruwa kukwata mkono. Esende za utuwa kuzeko leseza. So tukore, tuwe guda hazi. Godfrey Mosindi, the regional chairperson Bogo clan, presented to the Prime Minister the campaign task force for President Yoweri Kagutam 7 to vacuumain come 2026 general election. Nabanja thanked the Mbogo clan members for supporting the NRM government. She said that such meetings should foster unity and cohesion among the people and also encourage economic prosperity. I appeal to each one of you, or each one of us, to be proud of being a Mfumamboko. Mwe panke, abokumu ni Mfumamboko. Mwe yagari abokumu ni Mfumamboko. Tari muli mutu ungu Mfumamboko. Ati onu emu piku mura kwe go magabo, ojo singa mamu wange azayo Mfumamboko. Ama Mfumamboko oye! However, for other people to be proud of us, every Mufumambogo should be a role model. Therefore, every Mufumambogo should have a model home. Bulimutu alenge ukura na agia kumbuto. Ngu waki arukia weni wukusingwa kumfumambogo. This is the 10th annual general meeting for the Mbogo clan that rotated among districts for 2023 and combines 12 districts of Bunyoro, including Mubende, Chenjojo and Chenkonsi. This year, 2024, Chibale district will host the event. Shamim Naiga, UBC News. At the age of 37, Dr. Isabella Ipiu has engraved her name in history as the first female in East Africa to attain a PhD in anesthesiology. It is an expertise encompassing critical medical domains, including anesthesia, critical care medicine, emergency care medicine, intensive care medicine, and pain management. But how did she get here? Was it out of a dream, passion, or love? That is the story she's sharing with us. It is an achievement that continues to be celebrated. Because I had two A's, a B and a D. At both individual, national and international levels. I really want to thank God um, for keeping me. Isabella Epiu. The same achievement coming with a smile on many people's faces, including her own. So getting into medicine and getting the government scholarship, it was really straightforward. 
37 years ago, the family of Pastor Dr. Richard Epil in the present Dengwara district was blessed with an addition in the birth of Isabella Epil. The new family member would grow to bring more happiness. The journey to holding a PhD began during her days in primary school. I'm actually born in Jinja Hospital and uh, had a lot of my primary education in Jinja. So I completed from Victoria Nile Primary School where I excelled as one of the best girls in the district with a four. I made it to Gayaza High School and uh, there I spent six years and um, it opened doors for me to get a government scholarship to Makere University and uh, that's when I started my journey as a medical doctor. Becoming a medical professional did not come out of the blue. It was as a result of childhood dreams, passion and love for humanity. Maths and physics were my best subjects and then I had to kind of put extra effort into biology and chemistry because I wanted to, to go into the line of medicine. So it was interesting that um, I had to take this combination of uh, physics, chemistry, maths and biology. It was very hard, but excitingly, by the end, I excelled and I was able to get my government scholarship at Makere. Passion and focus are some other things that have enabled her overcome temptations. My dad always talked about passing with flying colors. Um, when I came back from Gayaza and I was the eighth in the class, he was not happy. <laughs> to him, I needed to be the first in the class. So that was a, a lot of pressure on me to, to, to excel and to keep doing better. Um, I think they were happy with the medical line. I've not heard him say maybe you should have done this or done that. So they were supportive and they were happy with the medical line. It is an academic journey that has seen her specialize in neurorespiratory physiology and health economics. You know, medicine is not easy. <laughs> like your first few weeks you go into this room and there are cadavers. You know, you have to start um, dissecting them and all that. So some students really get scared because that's your first exposure to medicine. Some students even drop out, some collapse at that stage. But yeah, we, we, we encourage each other as a group. We learned the anatomy, learned all the basic sciences, and we got through. Eventually, I, I finished my medicine program in 2009, and I opted to do my internship in Sorochi Hospital. Uh, medicine was in Makere in Mulago, so I spent five good years at the Makere Hill. I was in Africa Hall at that time, so crossing Katanga. We used to walk every day and, you know, get through with the program. So it was very successful. Dr. Isabella is a holder of numerous accolades from renowned global medical societies and institutions. President Yoweri Museveni has always appreciated her for exceptional research contributions. I must say, with the advocacy, I've seen so many changes. I mean, Mulago has now been uplifted. We have now new equipment. We have the regional referral hospitals having um, uh, ICUs now. Really thank government for this investment in equipment and surgery. They are continuing to sponsor more students in anesthesia, in surgery. These are steps that I really, really am grateful to government for, one, for my scholarship, but for all the other investments that they've done in health. The concern of brain drain is alive in her mind to which she wants more government support towards scientists. I'm hoping that I can get to a point where I can actually use all the skills that I've gained. I mean, right now, as the first anesthesiologist in Uganda with a PhD and then the first female in East Africa that we are aware of, um, there's a lot that we can do. The reason I came back from Australia was that we can train more PhDs here. We can increase research capacity here. We can do the groundbreaking research that I've learned out there and we can implement them here. At 37, marriage is not her priority. <laughs> and this is why. Investing in education, it's a very, very difficult journey. But you just keep like, you know what? Let me just finish. Maybe it's light at the end. You know, you just keep having that grit and, and support from mentors and all that. So 
now that I'm done, I'm sure I will, will come to those other chapters of my life. All these achievements have been as a result of inspirations with some role models present in the picture. Uh, Professor Harriet Mayanja, um, a professor of medicine at uh, Makere. She was my mentor also for the University of California Fellowship. Uh, she came in at a time when I had finished uh, all this research in East Africa and then now I was starting another big research with her ab about the 64 hospitals in Uganda. And so I had a whole thesis and I was like, how do I make this into a publication, you know? Um, if I send it as it's too big, you know, so she helped me. We broke it down. I got my first publication. I got the second. I got the third, you know. So it's, she's one person that I will really, really remember all my life. Dr. Epiu envisions leveraging advanced technology and specialized training to reduce reliance on international medical care. This, she says, will curb medical tourism and strengthen Uganda's health care system. And right now, I mean, in our environment, the president is promoting sciences. So this is the best time to have your child excel in sciences in our community. But in all these fields, children can really excel in everything they, they set out to do. Her accomplishments stand as a testament to perseverance and innovation. She sees serious potential for transformative change within the healthcare landscape of East Africa. Henry Okrut, UBC. Congratulations to Dr. Isabella White there, a great example to all the women out there and Uganda as a whole. Princess Katrina Sangaliambogo has commanded the contribution of partners to the Isakati Chanaba Gereka, which intends to pursue humanity among young people, while receiving 40 million shillings from MTN Momod towards the Isakati. Sangaliambogo expressed the need for reviving traditional values to have responsible citizens in the future. The enclosure is being conducted at Holmes Darling Junior School in Gayaza. The Echisaka Chichanaba Gereka Initiative by Naba Gereka Development Foundation intends to impart morals and humanity or Ubuntu Bulamu among young people. This year, the enclosure is set to focus at guiding attendees on social media usage and emotional intelligence. We are, we are well aware that we have ICT and social media that came. It's a very useful tool, but it's a tool that we got without a manual. So whereas there is no manual for it, we know that it's very critical that we teach the people that are using it to use it responsibly and to use it for social transformation. Princess Katrina Sangaliambogo has expressed timely need to revive traditional values while raising children. Sangaliambogo was receiving support from MTN Momo towards Echisakate and commends the role of partners. This is particularly important because of its significance in terms of nurturing the generation of Uganda and the values of the Obutulam. Our flagship program, the Saka Techan Nawagarika, is a tool critical for reviving our traditional values and should be rallying point of all Ugandan children and youth as we navigate through life. Just like in sports, the Ubuntu Lomu values can be found in the Chisaka Techa such as tenacity, teamwork and integrity, equality, empathy and leadership around each other. MTN Momo has committed support of 40 million shillings, an ICT van and human resource during the period of Chisaka And as part of our partnership in this Chisaka we have offered 40 million Uganda shillings to help uh, run the activities that are planned for this year. We have also offered our ICT bus and uh, our technical experts who are going to teach the Rasaka coding, which we believe is a crucial skill in today's digital age. We have also lined up uh, our staff under the program of Women at Work, who are going to come and mentor and also coach the Basakate on how to coexist with other people and how to behave at work. 
this year, the Echisaka Tichanaba Gerika is running under the theme in pursuit of Ubuntu Bulamu, and at least 420 children are expected to participate. Komagum Rogers and Abdul Nasir Wama for UBC. <laughs> Ministry of Local Government has conducted capacity building for people, mainly those that are introduced, that is to do with the e-learning. E I'll take it again. Ministry of Local Government has conducted capacity building for people manning the newly introduced digital revenue collection system dubbed e-log revenue system. This is aimed to enhance revenue collection in local government units across the country while facilitating during a training of councillors of Mbale City at Mbale City Council Chambers, Charles Mwejuche, a principal inspector in the Ministry of Local Government, stressed that the system intends to bridge gaps prevailed in revenue collection systems in the country for local governments to enhance their tax base. Recently established administrative units in the country, transitioning from a municipality to a state status, Mbale City Council has grappled with revenue collection challenges. Some officers are reported to use the council receipts to collect revenue, yet the funds don't reach council coffers. People go and uh, meet our taxpayers and people give them money in physical cash. And then we, we cannot, I cannot underrate the, uh, the fact that there is a lot of corruption. The taxpayer is supposed to pay two million, he ends up paying five hundred, and the, also the, also the staff moves away with a little a little kickback for you, for him or herself. Abdullah Magambo, the Mbale State Council speaker, noted that for the financial year 2022-2023 budget, the council projected Uganda shillings 5.9 billion, but only realized Uganda shillings 2 billion, attributing the shortfall to a poor revenue collection system. The financial year of 2022-2023. We had a projection of 5.9 uh, billion, but we only realized 2, 2 billion. That means there's been a lot of uh, leakage uh, concerning local revenue. During the training of Mbali State Council staff and councillors at the Mbali State Chambers, Charles Mujuchi reiterated the importance of forming teams to conduct a comprehensive registration of taxpayers word by word. Create a team with a good team leader and they are under clear instructions. You say tomorrow we go into this world. I want to come back with, in the evening after one week with a full register of people in that world. Some council officials raised concerns about effectively collecting revenue from Mbali Kampala taxis whose drivers have been remitting revenue to Kampala authorities. Mwishucha, however, assured that the e -log revenue system enables the city to collect such revenue from tax operators. We select your routes from the system. You get a team to get them tax pack. What again achieve? My media your taxi operators. To buy a desk in a computer. I jawa to the bumjustery. The Mbali State Traders Association Masita welcomed the new system through their communications officer Kamad Musosi. They called for more capacity building for the entire business community to facilitate the adoption of this new technology. According to city authorities, Mbali has projected Uganda shilling 6.3 billion for the 2023-2024 financial year budget. They are optimistic about realizing at least 70 to 80 percent of this projection with the implementation of the e-log revenue system. Good to know you're still watching the weekly news roundup. The Commissioner in Charge of Teacher Education Training and Development of the Ministry of Education and Sports, Joseph Ashikomeko, has advised trainers of secondary school science teachers that have been empowered with skills of the new curriculum to transfer knowledge to other teachers to enable them to teach students according to required standards. Uh, this was during the training of secondary school science teachers uh, from Eastern Region under the Secondary Science and Mathematics Teachers Program, SESEMAT, where teachers have been equipped with more knowledge and skills about the new curriculum. All right. Uh, this arrangement it is only, it's not only going to uh, be in the Eastern Region, but it is going to be uh, escalated to other parts of the country, that is the, the different regions, to ensure that the teachers of science actually well equipped with the competences that are required 
especially when you're looking at the new curriculum on how to deliver uh, the competence-based curriculum. Uh, in this, we are building their capacity to ensure that uh, they really have the requisite competences and they have the technical competences and the professional competences. What I mean by the technical competences, if one is, a, a, say, a teacher of physics, must have the competences in that physics. I'm not saying he's going to be a physician, but then he has the competences that are required of a teacher of physics and then also the technical the, uh, professional competences, that is the delivery. It's not only delivered, but the preparation, because uh, teachers lose out when it comes to interpretation of the curriculum, that is, which is part of the preparation for teaching and learning. The preparation involves a lot. There is interpretation, there is determining of the learning activities, there is determining of the learning tasks, there is determining of uh, um, what to use in the delivery, there is determining of so many things that uh, a teacher is supposed to have. So we are trying to build uh, the capacity of these trainers of trainers, in the line of preparation, also in the line of delivery, because delivery does not mean standing before learners and then begin telling them stories about what you're going to teach. No, it involves a lot. This training is going to help us in, uh, you know, unpacking the new curriculum, uh, setting end of year assessment, which has been a challenge for most of our teachers. Most of the trainings we've had uh, in the new curriculum were trainings of, you know, understanding the new curriculum how to facilitate or teach in a new curriculum but this training is going to have a lot of end of year assessment where teachers were having very many challenges they could not really they were asking how do you write end of year assessment but by from this training we are going to learn how to make end of year assessment we shall take this to our teachers on ground and then we shall implement by moving in the different schools in our regions to ensure that teaching the teachers are doing what they are supposed to do there were challenges that we are being faced by the teachers of science and mathematics in as far as setting items which are in line with the new lower secondary curriculum. Because this one was echoed around, so we, we thought it wise that SESEMAT program should come on board in order to address this challenge. Teenagers from different high schools in Uganda attended a two-day engagement on dangers of using drugs and challenges that young people face. The engagement was held at St. Paul's Demonstration Primary School in Gaba. Well, it's a stage where you actually, you can exceed and succeed in everything that you do. Being a teenager can be a challenging experience for both the adolescents and their parents. During the week, a group of spearheaded women held an engagement-themed team talk at St. Paul's Primary School in Gaba as many issues were addressed, including the dangers of abusing alcohol and drugs. Young people have to be respectful to their parents, to listen, because they are guiding them on how they can, they can avoid these things. So them being respect, respectful uh, to their parents is helpful. They should have self-esteem. They should love themselves. Knowing yourself, loving yourself, having values for yourself is very, very important. So if you want to avoid these things, avoid groups, bad groups. Choosing right friends is very, very important. And praying for themselves is very important. Apart from drug abuse, there were other topics of discussion that included communication skills, time management, and problems that affect the youth in this day and age. First, I'd like to say this has been a very interesting group of people. We've had both boys and girls different ages, and we've had open-ended conversation with the motherly figures, those are people giving us the talk. Um, we've been able to see how teens face certain problems and can't bring them up to their parents because of different, uh, different barriers, like there's communication, those principles, parents were brought up in a different way from, the, from their children. I've actually learned a lot. I got a chance to interact with people who are my age, which is really hard because I'm always at home and I'm at school. And like, it's just nice to get a different feel of everything. I really enjoyed this a lot because we've learned so much, like communication. We've learned about substance abuse, which is a very big problem in the days of today. Like everyone's succumbing to it. And also, I also, I also like the part where we're not about friends. I really feel like friends are the biggest influencers of everything that everyone does. Because everyone will be like, what do my friends say? What do they say? 
it's always about what they say. So I really feel like having such talks about things that affect actual teenagers in these days really enables everyone to learn more and makes the world a better place for everyone. The engagement helped these teenagers to form strong connections and learn how to bond during different activities in order to enable them see a brighter perspective on how to become better youth in today's society. Marsha Mira Victor, UBC News. <laughs> it's super fast internet. Oh, it's a super camera. It's a super battery. Yeah, it's a super deal. Get the Capo de Super from MTN now at a reduced initial deposit of only 49,000 shillings and pay the balance in Pola and Pola for as low as 833 shillings per day. Grab this Super Capo de deal and get 2 GB of free MTN data every month for 8 months. Get the Capo de Super now now from any MTN shop countrywide. Everywhere you go, MTN. Regulated by UCC. No more rashes and irritations. Movit Herbal Jelly and Herbal Soap is rich in natural herbs for a smooth and glowing skin. Movit all day confidence. When it is KB o'clock, you need more from your voice bundles. That's why MTN is offering you more minutes across all networks that don't expire. Buy the new 19-minute Freedom Bundle at 5K or the 200-minute Bundle at 10K and jazz with no limit. Katiteri ate ate. No excuses. Make the call now. Dial star one zero zero star two one hash or use the My MTN app and enjoy your freedom bundle today. MTN. Together we are unstoppable. Terms and conditions apply. MTN is regulated by the Uganda Communications Commission. Key organs. The non-aligned movement operates through key organs such as the summit conference, ministerial meetings, and the coordinating bureau. These structures facilitate diplomatic collaboration among member states providing forums for discussions on common challenges and the formulation of collective responses. Welcome back, still here to serve you and of course uh, giving you uh, insight into business. A renowned ICT training company, GSM 5G, has started the second phase of 2024 training to empower youth with ICT skills. The chief executive, Ali Raza, told UBC that he targets training 1,000 youth in the first half of 2024. GSM 5G trains youth in information communication technology hardware engineering, software engineering, laptop engineering, and home manufacturing to enable them settle an income and counter external migration. Every after two hours, between four to five youth enter GSM 5G training center seeking skills in ICTs. GSM 5G has set up training centers spread over Kampala City to train youth in ICTs, hardware engineering, and software engineering. Open that. Three tools. Okay. It is January 2024, and GSM 5G set up a center to train youth in ICT skills so that they start making money. I'm targeting 1,000 youth to train within three months' time, which we need the space. It will create itself the job burden will reduce from the government. Secondly. The youth will be paid the same salaries 
which our companies are paying to the foreigner people. At the main training center located at Mutasa Cafero complex along William Street is the second training center. Here, youth are trained in phone repair and software update. There are other centers that deal in different packages of ICTs. In 2024, we are more aggressive, you can see. We want the best institute in this country for all our East African region, which will belong only for the technology. We have made the shift now where we are doing it uh, three to four students, then every two hours we are changing. Rosette Tibahua, aged 25, is one of the trainees in phone repair. She shunned the Arab world to seek employment. I saw many girls leaving the country, going to Arabic countries, which I never wanted. Then through somebody, I was connected to the director of, of GSM 5G, uh, whom advised me to come here and do the training in motherboard repairing and phone gadgets, which I feel so happy that now I have learned something which is going to help me to earn. Youth of between 17 to 30 years are opening up to new trends to beat unemployment. I played for Uganda cricket like 8, 10 years. After retirement, I was somehow struggling in life, looking for a job. The director, Mr. Ali, GSM 5G, uh, he has divided me to come and learn soft software work. I told him I don't have money to learn. He said, no, 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 it's a free. GSM 5G says Uganda's population will provide market for the service. As 2024 starts, GSM 5G targets more youth to earn an average of 1 million shillings per month. Ariana Francisco, UBC News. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the day, a great week ahead, a fruitful one, of course, as you enjoy the year 2024. Greetings from the team behind the scene. My name is Sandra Kehunde. God bless you. BC, inspiring Uganda. The official broadcaster of Nana Land Movement and G77 Summits 2024. This weekend on UBC. This girl is a former beauty pageant and uh, she had her major mega breakthrough during the pandemic. Fiona, Apia! <laughs> yo, I'm here on that Yo, yo, I'm <laughs> Man, it's like I'm, I'm introducing a major.